Hey folks, it's James and it's part two of our three-part series. And we're going to use Procreate to design and render the elevation of the floor plan we created in part one of this series. Again, using only proportions and no scales and rulers of any kind. So get out your iPad, download the free Procreate file I use in this video in the description below, and get ready for part two, designing and rendering an elevation without keyboard and mouse. Welcome back to part two of this series. In part one, we created this floor plan. And in part two, we're gonna create this section elevation through that plan. Then we'll do the perspective of the room in part three of the series, so let's go. So to start here, I'm going to copy the canvas of the floor plan we did before. And I'm going to go to a new canvas, and there it is in the clipboard, already ready for me. I tap it, and it comes right up. And again, I'm going to pick the view that I want here for this section elevation. Let's look at the fireplace. Uh, let's, let's go right past these two sectional couches. And now I am going to take the um, plan itself and turn it so I can work on it. And I do that by um, using the selection and the transform tool, obviously. Um, I'm going to add a sheet of my tracing paper. Or, uh, it's essentially a layer of opaque white and adjust the opacity accordingly. And then I'll add a new layer on top of that and we can start to work. So step one is to rough out, very rough, very ugly, rough out the shape of the room and some of the things in the room that I'm going to do. And this helps me visualize it. So I'm going to visualize not only that shape, but I'm also going to draw three eight foot squares across that 24 foot space. And I'm going to break that eight feet down all by eye, just all visually. And so I come up with my 10 foot plate height or the 10 foot top of the wall. And you see that here. Now knowing that I can go up to the trust ceiling that is above this space because after all it was a barn-like space that combined a living room and dining room and I'll get that truss roughly in and so I can really begin to visualize this space now let's quickly add a person I've got my two foot increments on the side if I go one half increment above four feet I've got five feet and now I can add a person and uh, this makes the whole thing more real even though I'm being very rough I still want to know the relative size of a person judge whether I'm far off or not and of course I'm going to add the grid lines back I know that half the room is 12 feet I'm going to use each grid equaling two feet so I'm going to adjust the grid and I'm going to come down to this corner the grids don't always line up with the things that you have on top of them but this time I'm going to line up that entire grid based on that lower right corner. And now I'm going to start that first bit of a sectional, again, referring to these two foot grids. I'm going to go half of two feet here. I know this is 12 inches. And I know a sectional sofa C is going to be around 16 or 18 inches. So I'm going to go a little bit above the 12 inches. And that back of that sofa is probably going to be at 30, 36. And pop that in, give the sectional seating section uh, a back raise it up off the floor give it uh, give it some legs just give it a little quick shading make it real um, 30 inch seat about 12 inches total 9 to 12 inches total and the thickness of the back beyond the seat so there's one side of the sectional and I'll switch over and quickly scribble in the other one I could have copied and pasted this, but uh, I'll do it again just so you see how kind of sloppy and loose I get, but it doesn't matter at this point. Now I'm going to switch over to the fireplace. I'm going quick at this point because I want to make sure enough people hang around for the end where we render this thing. Um, but I know it is valuable to some of you to see how all of this comes together. And the main point here is to emphasize how rough this drawing is. And now we're going to turn that drawing into a more precise line drawing. So I do my usual routine. I added a layer on top. This time I'm going to use Drawing Assist. And I'm going to quickly draft out as many lines as I can. I won't be able to make everything drafted and straight. But I'll take care of, of as many things as I can this way. Now I did copy and paste that sideboard in the background. So here's my first freehand object. Is just 
much faster to do this freehand and it really doesn't take away from the final effect. I'll throw some books in, some things on the mantle. I'll even uh, take a little time to put in the fireplace and irons and the logs. A little fire there. Now these are the kinds of things that really will make a difference. Uh, knowing how stone lays up, how it's basically two stones over one and one stone over two. So I'm going to throw in the stone fireplace and give it a little variety. And this is going to be my final launch right. So let's uh, start and get into this rendered effect here with the daylight coming in. And again, I'll start here by adding a layer, but this time I'll add it below the line drawings because I don't want the shading to interfere with the line drawing at all. And I'm going to start with something big. I'll start with the walls in the background and I'll use this technique of the rectangular selection tool. I'll select the entire area. I'm going to go to the number five flat brush and I'm using this like watercolor basically. I'm pressing, barely pressing down here even though I'm using black and full black as the color and you'll have to practice this and get used to it. Now I'm going to add some texture over this with a Nikki Roll brush and you can see it's just enough texture to make the wall interesting. It could be sheetrock, it could be plaster. I'll come back in here and I will take these areas out of that wash and then I'll continue that wash up into the trusses I'll use the selection tool to isolate the areas that I want and I'll use that same thin wash technique. Just uh, all I can say is practice this and you'll get it down. Back to the number 10 Nikki roll. A thin film of that over the top and now I've got a pretty well textured background. I can duplicate that layer and multiply it to make it darker but I'm going to stick with a lighter area and now I'm going to erase out the furniture, some of the places that are going to be brighter. I just don't want them to be colored by that layer of the wall. And let's go to the fireplace now. So I'm going to label each of these areas because they may change and it's, again, this is what we're going after. I don't want you to uh, give up on me here. I know it looks tedious, but it really does end in a, in a very nice thing. And the other lesson to keep in mind here is that you can get to that place being much cruder than you would expect. So you can see I'm not going into the lines. I'm not even trying to keep each stone uniform. I'm giving the stones character. I'm adding little patches and squiggles because of course every stone would be different in real life. I'll come up here and I'll freehand some of the stones above the trusses. I don't have lines for those, but I want to add a little character up there. And now that's a little light. I want to make sure I can make this fireplace as dark as I need to. So basically I'm selecting the entire fireplace area and adding a layer of um, transparent black. That's the old trick of using multiply mode again. And I'm going to once again take out the areas that I know are going to be light later on. This area of the painting, the area of the fireplace. And I'll always use that rectangular selection tool to speed things up if possible. Now I'm going with freehand because I still need to clean up the black out of a couple of oddly shaped areas like these books and that face. Okay, that's far enough along. And here are these layers. This is interesting. You can tap and hold and you can see what each of these layers has looked like so far isolated. And let's keep going. Now I'm going to add a layer for the tables or the sideboards in the background back to my rectangular selection tool and basically the same technique if I uh, zoom in here you can see that I'm a quick wash I'm making these a little darker than the background walls and I'm still using the same technique though in this case actually I'm going to use a distinct wood grain the 29 fine hair brush and I'm going to add a layer on top of that original tone layer and just add a little wood grain to these. Again, not very realistic, but it will have a sort of striking graphic effect that accomplishes what I want. And as I get to the end of these things, I tend to get a little 
overwhelmed and maybe a little bored. And so I'm adding a general layer called details. And I can come in here and do all the little pieces that I know will really make this thing sing. So put some reflection on the bowl, a little detail on the table lamps. Same thing on this side. And add some wood to the frames. And of course, I'm starting to think about light at this point. There's a painting light over these paintings. So I know that the top part of the frame will be darker because the light will come down and put that in shade because of the angle. And uh, now let's even do the paintings. Bob Ross would appreciate that. I'll just pull a little rectangular selection here and I'll really add some very random things, out of focus things. I don't want these to be realistic paintings. You could always drop in the image of a real painting if you wanted to. But let's just make these abstract enough just to kind of create a focus but not create too much attention on them. Maybe I'll make this one a Kandinsky completely abstract, throw in some lines, some happy little trees. And there you go. So again, I want to impress on you, it's really kind of sloppy when you look in close, but if you're working quickly and you have this over overarching vision of the space, what do you want it to look like? None of the individual parts are that important. It's much more important to get the cumulative effect I am going to add some color to this truss here, mostly because I want to have flexibility later on in the drawing. I want to be able to make it dark or light. So I'm going to flood that entire selected area with white, but I can always make that white darker or later later on. And now I'm just going to add this rough wood grain with that same fine hair brush. And this kind of thing can really go quickly mostly because you're going to be able to adjust it later at any point. And you can see me periodically through these things. I'm adjusting the layers, trying to get it to read just enough so I can take the next step. Now, I get to this point and I realize I can do some quick things here to give it a lot more drama. And I'm going to select all of these layers so I can move the entire drawing back to the middle of the canvas and um, it's really just a question of tapping a layer and then side swiping the rest of them and now I tap out of that and basically I'm going to add a dark ground plane I'm going to use the selection tool to grab that unusual shaped area I'm going to adjust that black remember I'm trying to keep every area that I do fully opaque I don't want to use transparency in the layers menu and now I'm going to add a little sky back there. I can always make this darker, but I'm going to erase up from the horizon. And now it's time to do our daylight study. So I begin by finding an angle for the sun that will make the rays of the sun come far enough into the room to make it kind of exciting. Here I get to make sure that ray crosses a bit of the stone in the fireplace. I'm going to bring that light down at the same angle from the other wall even though there's no sun over there and I'm going to tap a freehand selection that basically fills this entire space and again I'm going to create a layer and put that layer in multiply mode and then I'm going to flood it with black I'm going to adjust the brightness not the transparency I'm going to adjust the brightness and I'm going to go back in here now with a selection tool and erase out where these rays of light are coming down. I'm trying to follow my red lines here I made in my diagram and it's not very much contrast but you can see that I've just taken that area out of that background wash. Uh, doesn't always work to do three finger swipe but uh, I have trouble with that too, in case you do. So here you go. That's that's the gist of it. But of course, it's a little too stark in some areas. So I'm going to soften that with the 
soft brush in eraser mode. And I'll come up here where some of the bounce light might collect up at the top of the space. I'll lighten some of these paintings. But for the most part, I've created what I need and I can go back in and show you how just using the brightness tool, I can increase that effect. And now let's do an interior lighting study. So it starts the same way. I'm going to, on a separate layer with multiply blend mode, I'm going to pick out this entire interior volume. I'm going to flood it with a black and use the hue and adjustment tool to lighten that black. But I want to keep this pretty dark still because I'm now I'm going to go in, in eraser mode and uh, do one of my favorite things, which is pull the light or pull the darkness out and leave light where I want the light. So you can see by subtracting that layer, it's on a different layer now, so I can adjust it as I need to. And that's just the first pass, the things that are the brightest and the things that are rectangular. Now I'm going to go back in and adjust the general level of darkness and I'm going to come in with my soft brush and this is the really fun part. I'm going to show the actual pools of light from the electric light. I'm going to scrub out the table lamps, make them glow. Lighten these sections a little, make the fireplace glow. I think you're really going to have fun with this. If you haven't done this in any of my other videos, this is really where the room comes to life. And you can see that all the little decisions we've made up till now haven't really been that important. It's not important to get all your lines perfect, especially when you have this effect. So there you have your nighttime lighting study. And in this video, we've gone from this floor plan to this very rough elevation, to this line drawing of an elevation, to this daylight study of an elevation, to this nighttime lighting study of this elevation. For those of you who want to look at this more closely, I'm going to make this original version of my Procreate file available on my website at the link below in the description. And in the next part of this series, we are going to do a perspective from this room. So stick around and I'll see you then. To keep learning how Procreate takes your hand designing and drawing skills to the next level, tap on this image and I'll see you in the next lesson.